from Oasis of Faith Christian Center in Hesperia, California. Welcome to the Oasis of Faith with pastor and teacher, Daryl Harrelson. Welcome to the Oasis of Faith. Let's turn in our Bibles, if you would please, this morning to the book of Colossians chapter 2. And as you're turning there, if you would, say this after me. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. And I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Today is a day that we celebrate as Pastor Ennis mentioned earlier, that we celebrate what we call the Resurrection or Resurrection Sunday. Amen. The resurrection of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. We do not celebrate Easter. That's right. And there's reasons for it. If you've been around this church, you'll know why we don't. Yep. And uh, I don't know why the church still does, but we don't. Amen. We celebrate the resurrection of Christ. That's it. You say, well, why is this so important? Well, the Greeks have a term... And the term on Resurrection Sunday is this, Christos Anesti, Christos Anesti, which means, and they, they say it to one another, Greeks, even to this day, they say it to one another on Resurrection Sunday, Christos Anesti, and then their reply is, Athelos Anesti, which means, Christos Anesti means, Christ is risen. Amen. The response is, Truly risen. Amen. You say, well, why is it so important that we celebrate the resurrection of Christ? Because if Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, there would be no Christianity. That's what sets us apart from all other quote unquote religions. Our God is alive. And I might add, He's doing quite well. But all the other gods of all the other religions, they're all dead and in a hole in the ground. And there are people all over the world today that are worship, worshiping their false gods who are dead. But Jesus is alive. I want to share something with you that the Lord has laid on my heart about today because, like I say, I'm not a traditionalist. And so sometimes on Resurrection Sunday, I don't even minister resurrection Sunday message but today I am and I want us to look first off here in Colossians chapter 2 as Paul is writing to the church at Colossae in verse 8 Paul makes an astounding statement here in verse 8 and he says beware lest any man spoil you that word spoil in the Greek means to cheat or deceive you. Did you catch that? Beware lest any man spoil, cheat, or deceive you through philosophy. But not only philosophy. And vain deceit, the word vain here, and I'm going to be using this throughout the teaching today. The word vain means this. Dead, empty, useless, and non-productive. It actually comes from the Greek word nekra, N-E-K-R-A, which means dead. It's during the during the Old Testament times there were what were called there were there were what was called necromancers. They were people who consulted with the dead, or they thought they were consulting with the dead. And that's where this word vain comes from. It comes from the word necra. He says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ or the anointed one and his anointing. Paul, or Jesus said it this way in the book of Mark. He told the religious people of his day, he said, your traditions, the traditions of men, have made the word of God of no effect. 
Tradition will do that. So when you deal with things like, and, and if the, see, if the, if the average Joe Christian would just do their Bible study and read their Bible and just, just do some research, you would find out that a lot of things that we do in the church world today are not biblical. Right. For instance, right now, people call this day Easter. But they don't know where the word Easter comes from. The word Easter is only mentioned one time in the Bible. It's found in the book of Acts. It's found one time, and it's actually in the Greek, it's translated Pascha, which means Passover. Easter comes from the goddess, the pagan goddess, I might add, the pagan goddess of fertility. You with me? And so how bunny rabbits... (laughs) Easter eggs, chocolate bunnies, colored eggs, what any of those have to do with the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I've yet to figure out in my almost 64 years of life. I can't figure it out. What does it have to do with the the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But the world has found a way. To create marketing schemes and ideas to promote business and to make money. And they've done the same thing with Christmas when it comes to the birth of Christ. And by the way, if you didn't know, Jesus was not born on December 25th. And if you do your homework, you'll find out he was born in the springtime. Well, I heard he was born in September and October. Wrong. He was born in the springtime. Somewhere toward the end of March, first part of April. But anyway, we follow a lot of traditional ideas through teaching, through religion. And so Paul said here to beware of these traditions, these philosophies, and so on and so forth. And so what I want to talk to you about today is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And what he says here. He says that we're not spoiled or cheated and deceived through vain deceit after the traditions of men and the rudiments of the world. Because you know as well as I do, if you you watch the television, you'll notice all the ads on television. I mean, all the candy companies are out there. You know, they're pushing their Easter eggs. They're pushing their chocolate bunnies. They're pushing all this. And I mean, all the markets and the stores, you know, they've got their their baskets and they've got... And you got to go buy... Susie, a new Easter dress, and you got to... Right. Amen. 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 And, you know, you know you, come on. That's just how it is. I remember when I was a kid growing up, every, every Easter, and I hate calling it Easter, but I have to to get people's attention because you tell them the resurrection of Christ, they go, huh? That's right. <laughs> Amen. Because the church, I'm sorry, I'm, not, I'm just being honest, but, but I can remember as a kid, every, every Easter they would have a Easter egg hunt. Okay? And, I mean, I think it was, I think somebody just came up with a way, because we didn't have iPads then. Right. See, that was our, our, our iPad for one day. Kids. It was something to keep them occupied. It, it babysat us. Why? Because the parents went out and threw eggs everywhere. They hit them everywhere. And now it's, it's, we spent the day looking for eggs. Right? And it just seems like as times change, now kids are not interested in Easter eggs. I mean, and like I said, I don't have a problem even like when it comes to Halloween. If you want to buy your kids candy, knock yourself out. You've got to pay the dentist bill. I don't care. But don't try to associate an egg or a chicken or a bunny rabbit with my Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't do that. It's all marketing. My wife was talking with someone the other day. She was shopping somewhere. And they said, we can't figure out what's going on because all the news is talking about is the bad economy and what's going on. But as far as we're concerned, Christmas hasn't stopped. They're busier than ever, even since Christmas. Well, my question is, where are the people getting the money? You know where they're getting it. 
But you see, even when it comes, I mean, have you noticed that once Christmas is over, within a week from Christmas, they're already promoting Valentine's Day. And once the minute Valentine's Day is over, now it's, it's Easter. Now once Easter is over after the day, get ready, because what's the next holiday? Memorial Day? Okay, then I, I, went, I went yesterday to the grocery store just to pick up a couple of things, you know, and to take home. And I'm standing in line, and I got a basket. I probably have five or six things in my little basket, because they have the little baskets now. And I got my, my cart there. And I have, I have never seen, because yesterday was Saturday, today's Resurrection Sunday. So I had never seen in my life so many people with so many baskets full of alcohol. Beer, wine, vodka, whiskey, all kinds. What for? Because they're going to celebrate Easter. We got to get our stuff. Hey. And you know what's sad? They don't know Jesus Christ. They don't know Christ. So it's all, it's all planned around marketing. It's all about money making. But why are we here today? We're not here today because it's Resurrection Sunday. We're here today because it's a day that we come and we gather as a church to worship yeah, yeah. our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yes, we thank God for the resurrection of Christ, and I do. Because if it hadn't been for Him being raised from the dead, like I said, all we have is just another religion. But thank God we can come and we know why we're here today. We're not here because it's a traditional thing. We're here because we're here to serve God and we love God. Amen? You with me? All right. Turn in your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15. I'm not going to keep you very long today. I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a quick message and let you go home and pull your ham out of the oven or whatever you got. <laughs> Amen. I'm not going to hold you all day. Somebody said, Good. <laughs> First Corinthians 15, and let's look at what the Apostle Paul says here. Because this is, this is so important that we, in, we need to understand something here about the resurrection of Christ. Paul says in verse 12, Now if Christ is preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you there is no resurrection right. of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. Hmm. Verse 14. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching, our preaching what? Is in, is in vain. It's vain. That means dead, empty, useless, non-productive. And your faith is also dead, empty, useless, and non-productive. Yes, we are found false witnesses, Paul said, of God. Because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised up raised not up. And if be, and so if it be that the dead rise not, for if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ is not raised, your faith is vain, dead, empty, useless, and nonproductive. Yet, notice this, if Christ has not been raised from the dead, he says, you are yet. In your sins. Oh my goodness. Could you imagine today if you and I are still in our sins? How many of you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord today? Well then the Bible says you're no longer in your sins. Now I'm going to mess with your theology for a moment. Okay, you ready? See, this is why if Jesus paid the price for your sin and he did and we know he did. Why are so many Christians walk around saying, well, you know, we're just sinners saved by grace. Right. Come on. No, you've been saved from your sins. Yeah. That means you're no longer a sinner. You can't be a sinner and be saved by grace. You're one or the other. I know this is not popular, but I'm okay with it because i got to answer to God, not you. Well, I've been taught all of my life, I'm just a dirty old sinner saved by grace. And that's why you don't live above the average. Because right. that, that's why you haven't found out who you are in Christ. 
But when you find out who, you're, who you are in Christ, you won't want to sin anymore. That's right. That's right. Well, Pastor, you're saying we don't have to sin? That's exactly what I'm saying. You don't have to sin. You can, and you probably do, but you don't have to. It's just like I said a moment ago about sickness and disease. You can get sick if you want to. There's plenty of it out there, and you go to the doctors, and they'll give it to you. No, there's, plenty, there's no shortage of it. The government will help you. They tried a couple years ago. I had people get mad at me because I wouldn't participate in it. I had Christians get mad at me. Well, what about COVID? What about it? I, don't, I ain't getting COVID. How can you say that? I refuse. I'm not participating. And they got mad because I didn't get COVID. Because I stood on the word. I never heard kind of this kind of teaching in my life. Everybody, everybody's going to get COVID. <laughs> Knock yourself out. Take mine while you're at it. I'm not, I'm not taking it. I can't remember the last time I've been sick. Because I found out the word of God says that Jesus took my infirmities. He bore my sicknesses. 1 Peter 2.24 says, by his stripes, I was healed. And if I was, I am. And if I am, I is. I found out that from the word of God that I can live and walk in divine health. I don't have to get sick. Now that makes people upset. Oh, well. I had a pastor try to argue with me one time. So you believe that people don't have to get sick? Yeah. Well, I had a friend, or I had a member in our church, and she got cancer and died. Sorry. Would you teach her? You teach her that she had to suffer for the Lord? I'm not teaching that garbage. That's right. Because if they have to, if you have to suffer for the Lord, then Jesus didn't suffer enough for you. That's right. I'm not going to make a liar out of my Savior and Lord. Amen. He died on a cross at Calvary, so I don't have to. That's right. That's right. He went to hell and paid the price for sin, so I don't have to go to hell. So who do I think I am thinking that I have to suffer for him when he suffered enough for everybody, for the whole mankind of the world? Am I making sense to you this morning? But this is religion. This is tradition. This is denominationalism. Don't look at me in that tone of voice because I was a Baptist till they kicked me out. I got filled with the Holy Ghost and they ran me out. I started speaking in tongues and they kicked me out of the Baptist church. Told me that tongue talking stuff was of the devil. You think about destroying a young Christian, a baby Christian who just gets born again, gets filled with the Holy Ghost, and the pastor tells him, tongue talking is of the, is of the devil? I cried for two weeks before the Lord finally told me what happened. The Lord revealed, revealed it to me. After that, 40-some years later, I pray in tongues every single day. Amen. I'm not going to let somebody cheat me out of my, my, my privileges in Christ. And I'm sure not going to let some dumb preacher talk me out no, of what is rightfully mine. Are you with me? But look what Paul says here. He said in verse 17 again, And if Christ is not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. Tell your neighbor, I'm no longer dead in my sins. Verse 18. Then they who are fallen asleep, or those who have already died, in Christ, he says, are perished. And if in this life we have no hope in Christ, Paul says we are of most men, or we are, we are of all men most miserable. In other words, if Jesus didn't raise from the dead, we are, we are in big trouble. Verse 20, but he says, but now is Christ risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of them who slept or have already died. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But every man in his order, Christ the first fruits, after, afterward they who are Christ's at his coming. So aren't you glad this morning that because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, 
that death has no power over you and I? What do you mean death has no power? Does that mean I'm not going to die? No, 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 no. You can't get around physical death. Everybody's going to die someday. Physically. But you don't have to die spiritually. That just means you don't have to die lost. But here again, I was just sharing with someone yesterday, or yesterday and today I think it was, that there's two things as a pastor, there's two things I don't like to do. This is just me. I don't like marriages. I don't like doing weddings. And I don't like doing funerals. I don't like doing either one of them. Do you know why? Because most people that get married in church don't understand what it really is. They're googly-eyed and they're all... Why you want to marry her? I just love her. Why you want to marry him? I just love him. Then they get married and three months later they can't stand each other. You, I thought you said you loved her. I did. What happened? Well, I don't feel like I love her anymore. Honey, you're married whether you feel like it or not. When it comes to the things of God, your feelings don't matter. Amen. You're saved whether you feel like it or not, if you've received Christ. Right. Whether you, how many of you ever woke up one day and you didn't feel saved? Oh, you're all holy. <laughs> you're all are holy. Oh, one person. Come on, I know as a young Christian, I got saved. and I, there, there, was, there was some times I questioned my salvation. I, I woke up, I, you know, I don't feel saved. Because, you know, when I first got saved, you know, it just seemed like, uh, uh, things changed. You know, the, 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 the sky was bluer. The grass was greener. Huh? The birds sang more prettier. You know, I mean, it, it, I mean, it just... And then about three or four weeks later, after I got saved, I didn't feel saved. And then I went to the Scripture and I found out that we walk by faith, not by feelings, not by sight. I'm saved by grace, not by my feelings. The other thing I don't like is doing funerals. Do you know why I don't like doing funerals? Because most Christians, and this is sad to say, most Christians don't understand, understand death. That's right. Because funerals are not really for the dead people. They're not for the dead people. They ain't there anyway in the coffin. They're for you. They're for the alive people. That's why I don't send flowers. They can't smell no flowers I send. No, I'm just being honest. They can't smell no flowers. Am I telling the truth or am I lying? What is all this stuff? Religion. Tradition. They ain't there anyway. They're in the presence of the Lord. They're in a better place. Really what you're crying about is they beat you to the punch. That's right. That's right. They already got there. Now you're just hoping you get there. Someone asked me one time, do you wish you could see your mom again? No. She's been gone almost 20 years. She's been in the presence of the Lord. Why do I want her to come back into this mess? My mom loved God. She's in the presence of God today. Why would I want her to come back? Don't you miss her? Sure I miss her. Miss her every day. Wish I could just pick up the phone and call her. But I can't. But I'm okay with it. Why? Because I know someday soon. Someday soon when Jesus comes back to take me out of here, I'll see her again. So I don't like doing weddings. I don't like doing funerals. I don't like it. And see, and people get mad at me when I say that. That well, where's your heart? You got a problem with me? You take it up with Jesus. Because I don't recollect him ever going to a funeral. Oh. <sighs> He never went to a funeral. Now I made some of you really mad. Well, what about Lazarus? That was he was been dead four days. That's right. He was already stinking. That's right. Yeah. He didn't go to a funeral. He went to raise him from the dead. Amen. There was a funeral procession one day as, as Jesus was going down the road, and, and he, he was in the little town of Nain. And there was a there was a widow woman, and her son had died, and they had him in a coffin, and here they come. And Jesus said, hold on. Oh, whoa. he wouldn't go into the funeral. And he went and laid his hand on the coffin and raised him from the dead. Amen. He didn't like being around death. 
Smith Wigglesworth. Anybody heard of Smith Wigglesworth? Yeah. Smith Wigglesworth refused to even wear a flower in his lapel, in his coat. Do you know why? He said once a flower has been cut, it's lost its life-giving force. It begins to die, and I don't want anything to do with death. But that's why he was able to raise 23 people from the dead. Ah. Are you with me? Did you go home? You still with me? Yeah. All right. So Jesus, here Jesus is. He's, he's ministering. People are coming around. They're surrounding him. Uh, Lord, Lord, um, um, uh, I want to follow you. I'll follow you anywhere you go. Just let me go take care of some business I got to take care of. Jesus says, any man that puts his hand to the plow and looks back, he's not fit for the kingdom. Well, Lord, Lord, I'll follow you anywhere, but let me go, let me go bury my dead relatives. You know what Jesus said? Let the dead bury the dead. See, the church would throw him out today. He'd walk through the church doors today and they'd say, crucify him. He doesn't have a heart. He doesn't have compassion. They, the church couldn't handle this teaching today. Some of you right now, you're upset with me. I can tell it. I can tell in my spirit, you, you're ready to throw rocks at me. Who does he think he is? I just believe the Bible. Amen. That's all. Amen. If the Bible says it, I believe it. I don't want any tradition. I don't want any religion. I don't want a preacher's uh, a philosophy. I don't want any preacher's opinion. Because opinions are like my wife says, they're like pennies. They're not worth a whole lot. I've had people call me, Pastor, what do you think about this? I don't think anything about it. What does the Bible say? Well, why? What's your opinion? I don't have an opinion. I've had people, well, what do, you, what do you think about homosexuality? I don't think about it. Why? I'm not homosexual. Well, what do you think about it? What does the Bible say about it? All right, you're judging. I don't have to judge anything. The Bible judges it. Well, Pastor, what do you think about abortion? Read the Bible. The Bible says it's murder. You're judging. No, I'm not. The Bible judges it. I don't have to judge anything. All I have to do is follow the Word. But see, I found most Christians don't want to follow the Word. Because you know why? The Word will make you feel uncomfortable. The Word will demand you do something about the way you're living. The Word will demand that you make some changes in your life. Uh-huh. I didn't point any fingers, so don't get mad at me. And I didn't mention any names. You still with me? So now we're talking about the resurrection of Jesus. i got to hurry up. So there's one thing that I want to deal with as we look into this. Is I want to deal with the Good Friday issue. Does anybody know what Good Friday is? Would you, would you raise your hand? Anybody know what Good Friday is? Now, don't act so holy now. Come on, everybody knows what Good Friday is, right? Talk to me. What is Good Friday? Y'all, what is Good Friday? Okay, Good Friday is told to us, has been told to us, that that's the day Jesus was crucified. Am I right? Now, can I mess with your theology a little bit more? He wasn't crucified on Friday. Well, we've always been taught. I know you've been taught wrong. Mm -hmm. and I can prove it to you from the Bible. Not from my opinion, but from the Bible. And if he did, if he was crucified on Friday, if he was, which he wasn't, yeah. what's so good about that? Yeah. Why is it so good? You kill somebody, that's good. Good Friday. Good Tuesday, hey. Brother Joe got blown away. Good Tuesday. Hey. Am I telling the truth? What's so good about Friday? Was the day was Jesus cru crucified? No. Go to Matthew chapter 28. Or uh, chapter 12, rather. See, if you follow the Bible, and you find, if you study and stay with what the Bible says, you'll be safe. See, I'm this way. I, I, I don't just, when I listen to people minister, I don't take anything they say for granted. If what I'm saying, if, if it's not in the Bible, throw it in the trash. You make whoever's talking to you back it up with the Bible. 
Matthew chapter 12. Now Jesus told us something about this. Verse 38, Matthew 12, 38. Then certain ones of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered him saying, Master, we would see a sign from you. But Jesus answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seek after a sign. There shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was... Are you all with me? As Jonah was what? Three days. Wait, wait, wait. What does your Bible say? Three days and three nights. Three days and three nights. Okay, I didn't say that. Your Bible says that, right? Three days and three nights in the what? In the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, did you catch that? Three days and three nights. See, because a a 24-hour day consists of a day and a night. Actually, if you really want to get technical, the Bible refers to the day as the evening and the morning. So in Jewish tradition, and even today, the day begins in the evening. 6 p.m. in the evening. And it goes till 6 p.m. the next day. And that's when the day changes. See, our day changes at midnight, which is not correct. Okay? Because the Bible says the evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning were the second day. The evening and the morning were the third day. The evening and the morning were the fourth day. All right? So according to the Bible, according to Jewish tradition, the day begins at 6 p.m. in the evening. The morning of that same day begins. Notice now, the morning of the same day. The day begins at 6 p.m., but the morning of the same day begins at 6 a.m. And concludes at 6 p.m. when the next day begins. All right? So we have, Jesus said, three days, three nights. All right, go to Matthew 28. Because I'm going to show you something here from the Bible. And hopefully you'll quit listening to a lot of this traditional nonsense. And you will think for yourself. Matthew 28, look at verse 1. Now, this is after Jesus' crucifixion, his death, burial. And now it says at the end of the Sabbath, everybody know what day the Sabbath is? All right, let's let's deal with this because I want to show you how the Sabbath works. The Sabbath begins at 6 p.m. on Friday evening. And goes through till Saturday, 6 p.m. of the following day. You with me? At 6 p.m. Saturday, the next day begins, which we would call Sunday. Y'all with me? And Sunday would go from 6 p.m. till the next day, 24 hours later, 6 p.m. on Monday. Okay. So he says at the end of the Sabbath, which would have been Saturday evening... At the end, as it began to dawn, it's before daylight, toward the first day of the week. What's the first day of the week? Sunday. What's the first day of the week? Sunday. Because the Sabbath day is always the end of the week. Right. So the first day of the week is on Sunday. Sunday. Came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to the sepulcher, or Jesus' tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance or his appearance was like lightning and his raiment or clothing was white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became his dead men. These were the the keepers of 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 the cemetery. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. For he's risen. Uh Uh-oh. So we got now in the mouth of one witness, the angel said, no, he's not here. He's he's risen. There's one witness. The Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. 
And as he came, or as, as, he, as he said, he's not here, he's risen as he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And he goes before you to Galilee. There shall you see him. I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, Jesus met them. Wait, wait, wait a minute. I thought he was dead. Oh, but the angel said, no, he's not here. He's alive. He's risen. And now as they're running to tell the other disciples, what happened? It didn't say Peter met them. It didn't say Paul met them. It didn't even say the Holy Ghost met them. It said Jesus met them. Saying all hail. That just simply means hello. And they came and held, held him by the feet. And they what? And they worshipped him. So now the angels saw him. The Marys now have seen him. There were at least two Marys, right? Yeah. So there's three. The Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Right. All right, we're not done. Hold on. Verse 10. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Now as they were going, some of the watch, or the soldiers, came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave, great large, or me, they gave large amounts of money to the soldiers, saying, Say you, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. So they bribed the soldiers to pay him off to lie and say that somebody took him out of the tomb while they were asleep. Verse 14. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money huh, and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. This was a place where they regularly attended. That's where they met. And when they saw him, uh-oh, you got an angel, at least two Marys, that's three witnesses, and now you've got 11 more, that's 14 witnesses. Am I right? Yeah. At least 14. And the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. All right. So now, when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke unto him, saying, all, hail, uh, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go you therefore and teach all na nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and I am with you always, even to the end of the world. So we see now the witnesses here who have seen that Jesus has rose from the dead. But now back, back to the Good Friday issue. If Jesus was crucified on Friday and they put him in the grave because Jewish law says you must be in the grave. If you die today, you must be in the grave by dark, by sundown. Forget the autopsies, forget all the reports. They had to be in the grave before dark. So if he's in the grave by 6 p.m. on Friday, you with me? So now you go Friday 6 p.m. till Saturday 6 p.m. is how many days? One day, one day. Wait, wait, you all with me? Yeah. Then talk to me. Talk. I, need, I need some help here. I like participation. Yeah. So from Friday to Saturday is how many days? One day. One day. One day. One day. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. It said he, he said he was going to be in the grave three days and three nights. So if he's... They put him in the grave on Friday and Saturday rolls around. That's one day. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday starts at 6 p.m. So between 6 p.m., the Bible says at the beginning of the week, toward the, the dawning of the day, they went to the tomb and he wasn't there. So somewhere between 6 p.m. Saturday evening and 6 a.m. Sunday morning, he disappeared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That only gives you a day and a half. 
I submit this to you. Backtrack. Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Jesus was crucified on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. He was in the grave by 6 p.m. Wednesday. Right. Till 6 p.m. Thursday mm -hmm. is how many days? One day. From 6 p.m. Thursday till 6 p.m. Friday is? Two days. From Friday, 6 p.m. till Saturday, 6 p.m.? There's your three days and three nights. And sometime between 6 p.m. Saturday evening and until 6 a.m. in the morning, sometime between that time, he came out of the tomb. Amen. There's where you get your three days and three nights. Not from Friday till Sunday. Right. It's not three days. I don't care how many universities you've been to. I don't care how many math classes you took. And how many degrees you have, or if you're an accountant, you cannot get three days and three nights from Friday to Sunday. There is no way, no how you can do it. Don't care how smart you are. Can't do it. Why does the church make things so complicated? Because they poo-poo away the idea. They don't want people, for, for centuries the church did not want people to read their Bible. Don't do as, don't, you don't need to know anything. We'll tell you what you need to know. Honey, I'm telling you, read your Bible. Amen. Study your Bible. Amen. There is no man on this earth who is infallible. That's right. There was only one man who was, and he walked the earth, and they crucified him, and his name was Jesus. Amen. And he's the only one. Nobody else. So I say get rid of religion. Yeah. I say get rid of tradition. So now what about, let's deal with this now, because I want to bring this to a close. I want to show you some things real quick. So you're going to have to write quick, all right? So if you write a notebook, write these, because I can't go to all the scriptures. I don't have enough time. But I want you to write these scriptures down and look at them for yourself. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I want to show you some of the things the Bible says that we have. Not all the things, I don't have time. But just some of the things that we have because of his death, burial, and resurrection. Number one, John 3.16 says, because of his death, burial, and resurrection, we have eternal life. Yeah. Say, I have, I have. Eternal, life. eternal life. So you know what that means? You don't have to go to hell. Right. If you've asked Jesus Christ into your heart, you're born again, you don't have to go to hell. That's right. Now you can, now this is going to mess with some of your doctrine. Because I don't, I don't subscribe to the, to the doctrine of once saved, always saved. That's right. That's heresy. That's yeah. right. I can prove it to you. Right. Yeah. You have a free will. That's right. I've been serving the Lord for 42 years. Yeah. And I'm going to heaven. But if I wake up tomorrow morning and I decide I don't want to go to heaven, yeah. don't tell me God's going to make me go to heaven. That's right. If I don't want to go to heaven, if I want to go to hell, he'll let me go to hell. He doesn't want me to, but he'll let me. Because yeah. I have a free will. He's not going to make me go to heaven. As a matter of fact, he might, if I ask him, he might, me, he might escort me to the, to the front door of hell itself. Right. He, might, he might walk me there. I don't know. So I don't, I don't swallow this, once saved, always saved. People ask me, are you saved? Every day. I walk a saved life. Why? Because I don't want to go to hell. I made Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. So I don't, I, I'm not a Christian on Sunday. I'm a Christian every day, 24-7. First and foremost. And see, and I have to be careful when I use that term Christian because, see, anybody can put on a badge now that says they're a Christian. But I say the difference between a Christian and a believer is this. Christians know about God, but believers know Him. They have a relationship with him. That's right. There's a difference. Number two, John 10.10 10 says because of the resurrection, we have abundant life. Mm -hmm. Now. Somebody say now. 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 Not when we get to heaven. Thank God for abundant life in heaven. But we have abundant life now. Right. Jesus said, I've come that they might have life and have life more abundantly. When? Now. 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 How many Christians do you know that are, that are not living the abundant life they could have? But Jesus died for it, so you could have it. Number three, because of the resurrection of the dead, from the dead, Jesus, 
we have, 1 Peter 2, 24 and 3 John 2 says, we have divine healing and we can walk and live in divine health. Now, divine healing is wonderful. But like I said, we have divine health. Amen. So let me ask you a question. Would you rather get healed and get sick and get healed and get sick and get healed and get sick? Or how would you just like to never get sick? Amen. That's divine health. Amen. That's why 3 John 2 says, Beloved, I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Number four. 3 John 2 and 2 Corinthians 8 9 says, because of the resurrection of Christ, we have prosperity. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 8 9 says this. Now, this is messing with your theology because this is because people don't read their Bible. The Bible said, Jesus, who was rich, you read it. I'm giving you the scripture. You go home and look it up. Amen. Jesus was rich. That's right. Amen. But for your sake, he became rich. Poor. poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. That's right. Oh, that's not talking about material wealth, Pastor. That's talking about spiritual wealth. Oh, really? So you'd say Jesus was rich spiritually? Yes. And he died so that you could be rich spiritually? Yeah. Well, how many people have you raised from the dead? All right. Say it. Say it. If it's spiritual prosperity, how many people have you raised from the dead? Not talking about spiritual prosperity. He's talking about material prosperity. Amen. Third John 2, once again. Beloved, I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul, soul prospers. Amen. God wants you to prosper. Amen. Number five, because of the resurrection. First John 5, 4 says we have world overcoming faith. John said it this way. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Amen. See, I have world overcoming faith. faith. Alright, that was, that was kind of shabby. Yeah. Say, I have world overcoming faith. I have world overcoming faith. But my question is, why are so many Christians overcome? Yeah. Well, Pastor, you just don't know what I'm going through. Well, praise the Lord. Oh, you know, I, uh, uh, I just don't know what I'm, I'm going to. You don't act like a world overcomer. Nope. You, act, you act like somebody who's whipped and defeated. That's right. yep. Jesus died for you to overcome the world. Yep. This is the victory that overcomes the world, yes. not the defeat. Yes. Number six, Matthew 27, 50 through 53. Ephesians 2.18 and Hebrews 4.14 4, through 16 says that we have access to God because of the resurrection of Christ. We have access to God. Amen. Hebrews says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Uh -huh. See, and here's, here's, here's the average Christian when they, when they come into God's presence. Here, here they come. Here's God's over there. Here, here, here they are. Here Lord, I, I know you're busy. You know, Lord, but I need some help here. Lord, I need to talk to you, but I know you're busy. Is that what he said? No. No. Hebrews says you come boldly. Amen. Come boldly into the throne of grace. Amen. Huh? Oh, I, 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 no, no, no. I know who I am in Christ. Father, I'm here again. Amen. Hey, I know I might be bugging you, but I don't give a rip. I know you love me, and you told me to come boldly, and I'm letting my request be made known unto you. My kids have never come in my house. Never, not one time. My grandkids have never come in my house one time, ever, and walked in and said, Dad, Grandpa, Mr. Harrelson, can I please see what's in your refrigerator? They walk in with their head back, and they go right to the refrigerator, and they don't ask me nothing. Because they know when they're in Grandpa's house, whatever's in the refrigerator, Chris, they can have it. They never ask me, can I, can I make a ham sandwich? <laughs> it's yours, baby. Amen. Matter of fact, when we go out to eat, I'll tell you how well my kids and grandkids are trained. When we go out to eat, nobody ever asked to pick up the bill. You know why? 
Hey, Dad, Dad told us to, if Dad invites you, he's paying. That's just the way it is. See, we need to learn that in church. Somebody invites you out, they're paying. Hey, you want to go out to lunch? We're going Dutch. I ain't going. <laughs> Dutch? You're worried about a $2.50 sandwich? If I had asked you to go out for a steak dinner, I'm paying. See, that's proper etiquette. We don't have any etiquette today in the church. If you can't afford to take anybody out, don't go. Don't invite them. If you're going to have a birthday party for your children and you can't afford steak and lobster, have hot dogs. Moving right along. Number seven. John 14, 27 and Philippians 4, 7 says that because of the resurrection, we have peace or shalom with God. Say peace. peace. Say, I have peace with God. I have peace with God. Number eight. John 15, 11, Nehemiah 8, 10. Because of the resurrection of Christ, we have the joy of the Lord. Amen. And if we have the joy, we have his strength. Amen. Nehemiah 8, 10 says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. strength. So if I have the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I have joy and I have strength. You will never hear, you will never hear negativity come out of me. Well, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just, I just don't feel, you know, I don't feel very good today, you know, and I'm just, I'm just really weak, you know, and honey, I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I just say what the word says. I've had people ask me, why are you always so happy? Why are you always so up? Because I choose to be. I tried down. You ever, you ever seen some Christians, they look like they've been sucking on a pickle all day? Or a lemon? They come to church. You ever see those, those, the ones that come to church, the Christians that come to church? Good morning. Yeah, it was. No. Why are you up? I choose to be up. I choose to be happy. And I realize it offends some people. I get people there's some people don't want to be around me because I'm up. They want me to get down to the gutter with them. I'm not doing it. You go find somebody else to go play in your, play in your gutter with you because I'm not. I'm a winner. I'm on top. I have victory. And I'm not saying it because this is Sunday. This is every day of my life and has been since I came to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a winner every day. Every day. Every day. Say, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Every, day. Every day. Who said that? Every day. Every day. Good job. Right on. Amen. <laughs> Number nine. Luke 13, or I'm sorry, Luke 11, verse 13, John 14, verses 16 and 26. First John 5, 4. Because of the resurrection of Christ, we have the Holy Spirit. Amen. Say, I have the Holy Spirit. I have the Holy Spirit. Say, I'm filled with the Spirit of God. I'm filled with Say, greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. You have the greater one inside you. Number 10, because of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 12, we have the gifts of the Holy Spirit or the manifestations of the Holy Spirit available to us. See, if there's some churches today, they don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit anymore. They don't believe in tongues and interpretation. They don't believe in prophecy. They don't believe in divine healing. They don't believe in, in uh, the word of wisdom, word of knowledge. They don't believe in, in discerning of spirits. They don't believe in any of the gifts or manifestations of the spirit. But I got news for you, honey. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have the gifts of the spirit. That's right. They're for us. Number 11, Matthew 28, verses 16 through 18, and Luke 10, 19. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power. Somebody say power. power. To tread on serpents. And over all the power of the enemy, so that nothing by any means can hurt you. So because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I have all power and authority over the devil. We used to sing this song, the devil's under my feet. Y'all remember that? Under my feet. He's under my feet. Well... That's where you need to keep him. Right. 
But see, too many of you want to play with him. You need a buddy. You need a pal. No, the devil's not your buddy. He's not your pal. He's your enemy. And you put him, you know, you know when I want to talk to the devil, here's what I do. I look at the bottom of my shoe. Because I tread on him. I walk on him. I squish him. Amen. Let him know who I am. Here, sucker, take that. Huh? Let the devil know who you are. What do we want? Number 12? 1 John 5, or excuse me, 1 John 4, 7 through 16 and Romans 5, 5. Because of the resurrection of Christ, I have the love of God. Yeah. Say, I have, I have the, love the love of God. Paul said it this way in Romans. He said, the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. John said it this way. That perfect love, watch this. Perfect love casts out all fear. Show me somebody who is fearful, afraid all the time. I'll, I'll show you somebody who doesn't walk the love walk. That's right. You walk in love, what are you afraid of? That's right. You don't have to be afraid of anybody or anything. What are we on now? Number what? Okay, whatever number we're on. 13? Ephesians 4, 8 through 13 and 1 Corinthians 12, 27 through 31. We have the five-fold ministry gifts because of the resurrection. We have the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Because if Jesus Christ had not resurrected from the dead, then he couldn't have left gifts to the church. He couldn't have left the five-fold ministry to the church, but he did. And last one, and I'll let you go on. Ready? 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, because of the resurrection... We have the divine nature of God. Amen. You ready for this? And all things that pertain to life and godliness. Amen. All because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So back to what Paul said. If Christ did not raise from the dead, we are of all men most miserable. And I'm here to tell you this morning, I don't know about you, but me personally, I am not a miserable man. I am a blessed man. I'm a happy man. I'm a victorious man. I'm on top. I'll not be stopped. Amen. I've been serving God for 42 years, and I'm not about to turn back now and, and fall into religion and fall into the trap of religion and goofy preachers. I'm not about to do it. Amen. I'm going to live in victory. See, I, I, and see but, but don't you care what people think about you? I don't care what people think. Nobody died for you. Nobody died for me except Jesus. Amen. Quit worrying about what people think about you. That's right. That's right. That's right. You are special in the eyes of God. He died for you. He gave his life for you. What do you care what people think about you? Care what people think? You know what I found out over the years? I've learned that people are going to think what they want to think about you regardless. None of us have any business thinking we're better than anyone else. Because you didn't have a say-so on how you came into this world. Nobody. You got here just like I did. One day we just showed up. That's right. What are you going to do about it? I'm here. Okay, now what are we going to do? Well, you know, my life has just been, a, uh, it's just been all lemons. We'll make lemonade. Amen. If your life's been all lemons, make lemonade. Amen. My life's just been, a, you know, my mom, the reason I'm the way I am and I got all these problems is mama fed me Twinkies when I was a child. Blame it on mama. She didn't make you eat the Twinkies. We always want to blame things on everybody else. Yes. When are we going to take responsibility for our own actions? Mm -hmm. You want to be victorious? Be victorious. That's right. You want to be a winner? Be a winner. You want to stay healed in your body? Stay healed in your body. Amen. You want to be rich? Be rich. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs, as a man thinks, so is, so is he. So is he. That's right. You want to be the victim instead of the victor? Knock yourself out. I'm not. Amen. Well, aren't you a victim of anything? Nope. You're not a victim of anything? Nope. Why? I choose not to be. That's it. See, some people just like sympathy. Well, you know what they said about me? You know what they did to me? I've had preachers can't even spell my name talk about me. You think I care what they think about me? I don't care. They don't pay my bills and they don't put food on my table. 
What do I care what preachers think? And people, you think, well, I care what people think? They're going to think what they want. Let them think what they want. Well, they go, to, they go to church on Sunday and Wednesday. No, they don't. We go seven days a week. I'm in church seven days a week. And they're talking about you because you go twice a week? Well, I don't go twice a week. I know. Are you supposed to go two days a week? You go whenever you want. But I've decided I'm going to be here. That's right. That's what I'm going to do. I'm done. Did you get anything out of that this morning? Amen. We trust the message has been a blessing to you. The announcer will give you more information on how you can obtain an audio or video of the message you just heard. Remember also these broadcasts are made possible by the continued free will offerings of you, the viewers and listeners. Remember also, God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. We trust that this message has been a blessing to you. If you would like to receive a copy of the message you have just heard, or if you would like more information about how you can receive a brochure with the list of all of Pastor Harrelson's teachings, then please call or write us. Our address is 17250 Lemon Street in Hesperia, California, 92345. Or you can call the ministry at area code 760-948-0745. Once again, our address is 17250 Lemon Street in Hesperia, California, 92345. Or you can call the ministry at area code 760-948-0745. Pastor Harrelson would like to invite you to come and join us in a live worship service. If you are visiting in or if you live in the high desert area, then please make plans now to be with us. Our address and times of services are on the screen. Remember that these television broadcasts are made possible by the continued free will offerings of you, the viewers and listeners. Remember, God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord.